a reflection for the first week of Advent. December 2nd, the Feast of Bishop Channing Moore Williams. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From God comes my salvation. God of peace, Advent is here, but so is the uncertainty of COVID. Advent is here, but so is the rush and the bustle of the holidays. Advent is here, but so is family tension and divisiveness. Advent is here, but so are our fears and anxieties. Advent is here. God says, do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you. God says, Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not do as the world does. God says, tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. The light is coming into this world. God says, be patient, strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Redeemer is near. Advent is here. We are awaiting the coming of the light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Psalm 130 Out of the depth I call to you, O God. God, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, God, were to note what is amiss, O God, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for God, my soul waits for you, in your word is my hope. My soul waits for God more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for God, for with God there is mercy. With God there is plenteous redemption, and God shall redeem Israel of all their sins. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever your house you enter first, say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person, but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out in a street and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we shall wipe it off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town.
Advent is a great time for preparation, anticipation, and waiting for the coming of Christ. But it's also a time of mission, a time to help others prepare for the coming of Christ. On December 2nd, we remember Richmond's son, the missionary bishop Channing Moore Williams. The gospel reading from Luke appointed for this day sits squarely at the intersection of mission and Advent and can help us to become Christ's missionaries throughout this season. Bishop Williams was born in Richmond, Virginia in 1829. He was raised by his widowed mother in relative poverty and later attended William and Mary in the Virginia Theological Seminary. After graduation, Bishop Williams went to China, where he was ordained. In 1866, he became bishop for both China and Japan. Two years later, he decided to concentrate all of his work on Japan. He made his base in Tokyo, where he founded a divinity school, later to become St. Paul's University. At a synod in 1887, he helped bring together the English and American missions to form the Holy Catholic Church of Japan. Bishop Williams translated parts of the Book of Common Prayer into Japanese and assisted with the translation of the Bible into Chinese. Bishop Williams ended his mission and returned to Virginia in 1908, where he died two years later. After a lifetime of patient and persistent work, the Church of China and Japan numbered less than 1,000 communicants. In the Gospel reading for the Feast of Bishop Williams, Jesus appoints 70 missionaries to go ahead of him to prepare the world, or at least the villages on the road ahead of him, for his coming. Jesus then gives these women and men some choice advice for the work ahead of them. Now, there are some great and off-quoted passages in this reading. There is this bit, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Or, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. These are tempting verses to focus on, but I would like to call your attention to the rest of the passage. I think you will agree that it's quite instructive for our mission during Advent. Jesus tells his followers to travel light. To be honest, he tells them to travel without taking anything. I have a recurrent New Year's resolution, do with less. I have watched Mary Kondo declutter closets and kitchen cabinets with amazement. Yet to date, all my attempts to introduce order into my everything kitchen drawer, also known as a black hole, have failed. I can tell you about trips to Target or worse yet to Ikea to pick up just one little thing. You know how that story ends. Wouldn't it be nice for us to resist the temptation of adding to our existing abundance? At what point do our possessions and the drive to acquire ever more become burdens on our lives? We instinctively know that less is more. Can we leave behind the physical and emotional clutter of our busy lives and resist the attempt to load up on more of the same? Can we travel light this Advent season? Jesus says, greet no one on the road. To be honest, I was a little taken aback at this. What a strange thing for Jesus to say. Why the impatience? I believe this phrase has to be read in cultural contexts. If you have been lucky enough to have experienced Middle Eastern hospitality, you know that doors are wide open and small encounters can easily turn into hours around a table with food and drink. To greet no one, does not mean to avoid all fellowship. It is rather a reminder to focus on the task at hand if the disciples only enjoy the hospitality of the first home they enter. How will their mission succeed? I also get distracted. My cell phone is a huge temptation. Twitter, Facebook and Instagram compete for attention with Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video or Disney+. Plus. What keeps you from the mission of Advent? How will you keep your focus on preparing for the coming of Christ? Jesus says, whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. This verse sums up the mission of Advent. 
The Prince of Peace is coming to bring God's peace to each of us. To prepare God's way, we need to practice peace. It sounds simple, and indeed it could be. This Advent, let us not pass our own stresses on to others. Let us not critique or seek to improve those who open their doors to us. Can we come as humble guests, bringing God's peace and love to the community around us? This Advent, let us listen for the concerns and needs of others. Jesus says, and if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest upon that person, but not, it will return to you. When we are received with open arms, the peace and love we bring multiplies. In each conversation with a family member, friend, or a stranger, we share and magnify the peace of Christ. What happens when doors close before us, when conflicts arise, when we are met with adversity? Christ tells us that this peace returns to us, for us to cherish and to pass on. This Advent, let us not take rejection personally. Let us not settle scores. Let us not be upset if we, or a gift we bear, is not received as we has hoped. Let's not be sad when friends, family, or our partners make a mistake or less than what we wish for. This Advent, let us take Jesus' message to heart while going on the mission of Advent. Let us travel lightly. Let us not be distracted. Let us bring peace and love to those around us. And let us not react to adversity, but be graceful. I imagine these values guided Bishop Williams on his travel, and they will also serve us well. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, who in your providence called Channing Moore Williams to the ministry of this church and gave him the gifts and perseverance to preach the gospel in new lands, inspire us by his example and prayers to commit our talents to your service, confident that you uphold those whom you call. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised us through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and guide us.